Along in the dark may seem unfamiliar to today's gamers, but back in the 90s, it was the precursor and the first game of the survival horror genre. The game's story is largely built upon the mysterious Lovecraftian universe of writer H.P. Lovecraft, drawing inspiration from the enigmatic voodoo religion of the African diaspora, the grittiness of Western frontier culture, and the iconic sci-fi works of artist H.R. Giger. The recent remake released on March 20 marks the return of this classic religion. Today, let's take a look back at the entire timeline of the Along in the Dark series in the past to prepare for the storyline of the remake, and hopefully, you can spare a few seconds to give a like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to support me. And let's get started! The story begins in September 1924, when renowned artist Jeremy Hartwood is confirmed to have passed away in the attic of the Dosito Mansion in Louisiana. Two individuals have been summoned to the abandoned mansion with different purposes, and these are also the two main characters who will control in the game. The first is private detective Edward Carnby, who arrives at the mansion to retrieve a piano he was commissioned to find by antique dealer Gloria Allen. The second is Emily Hartwood, Jeremy Hartwood's granddaughter, who sets foot in the mansion out of curiosity about a mystery that Jeremy was concealing. After being informed of her uncle's death by family lawyer Mr. Mark Garfi. Whether it's Edward or Emily chosen, as soon as they step into the mansion, the door slams shut, cutting them off from the outside world. As they exit to the attic where Jeremy passed away, they will encounter the monstrous creature dwelling within the mansion and must evade its relentless pursuit. However, that is not the only danger they will face. In their attempt to escape the Decito Mansion, Edward and Emily will uncover the dark past buried within its walls. The mansion once belonged to a pirate named Ezekiel Priest, so beneath it lies an underground cave system once used to perform rituals to prolong his life. In 1862, Priest died in a gunfight, but his loyal servant managed to transfer his soul into a tree beneath the underground cave before he officially ceased to exist. The Decito Mansion was then sold to Howard Hartwood, and Priest so took advantage of this opportunity to lure Howard down into the caves in an attempt to possess his body, but was vehemently rejected. Howard spent his lifetime threatening pranks, attempt to possess him, and after his death, his son Jeremy continued this mission, leading to the events as we know them. To finally put an end to pranks once and for all, Edward and Emily must find the tree where he resides, destroy it, and eliminate all of Prax's close minions within the mansion. After completing everything, the doors of the Cito mansion will open, and our two main characters will step outside to a waiting car, inside which lurks a monster that has not been destroyed yet. It's buzzed off into the city, leaving us in astonishment. On the same Halloween day, a girl named Grace Saunders got lost while trick-or-treating in the city. Grace later stumbled upon an abandoned toy store out of curiosity and ventured inside, only to be attacked by the toys within. While fleeing, she discovered Santa Claus trapped inside a candy cage and then free him by successfully mastering the jack-in-the-box toy. After being liberated, Santa Claus gifted Grace a new dress as a reward for her bravery, and then disappeared along with his herd of reindeer. A month after that day, Grace was abducted by a mysterious woman and taken to the Hell's Kitchen mansion, haunted by the ghost of one eye Jack in California. Grace's father, George Saunders, sought the help of private detective Ted Stryker to find his daughter. Ted then enlisted his colleague, Detective Edward Carnby, now known as Supernatural Eye after the events at the Cito Mansion, to locate the address of Hell's Kitchen and set off on the mission. After overcoming numerous guards, he found Grace but was attacked by a sinister clown. Two days later, Edward went to the Hell's Kitchen mansion as he couldn't contact Ted. 
unlike Ted's cautious approach, Edward went all out and found the remains of his unfortunate friend in the underground maze. With the aim of avenging his friend and rescuing Grace, Edward delved deeper into the investigation of Hell's Kitchen and learned that it was the home of the witch Elizabeth Jarrett, the former lover of the pirate Ezekiel Prakes, and also the mysterious woman who abducted Grace. After parting ways with Prakes, she bestowed immortality upon another pirate named one Eye Jack and his crew. Together, they built the house kitchen mansion and have lived there until today. Returning to Edward, after fighting Grace, he had to confront one eye Jack and was then captured by Elizabeth using dark magic. During this time, Grace managed to escape but was quickly recaptured and held a bro, Jack's flying Dutchman ship with Edward. At this point, Elizabeth the witch revealed that the purpose of kidnapping Grace was to turn her into a sacrifice for the ritual that prolonged Jack's life and his crew's every 100 years. While Elizabeth repaired for the ritual, Grace escaped and sought to rescue Edward. Together, they successfully thwarted Elizabeth and defeated Jack's crew before the ritual could be completed. They both then fled on a small boat onto the open sea, while Jack, Hell's Kitchen, and the Flying Dutchman were permanently buried in the dark caves. In 1925, Detective Edward received a call from a man named Greg Saunders calling from the Hill Century Film Studio to find a missing film crew in Mojave. Initially uninterested, Edward changed his mind upon learning that Emily Hartwood, his former comrade in the DeCito Mansion incident, was also among the missing group. The location of the disappearance was the ghost town Slogger Gutch in Mojave. In the past, this town was found by Jet Stone, son of the witch Elizabeth Jarrett and pirate Ezekiel Prakes, along with the Elwood brothers Pai Tong Lee Tong and long miner Jane Burris. Upon arrival, Edward found a warning letter, we will return at the tomb of one Eye Jack and discover a mysterious underground passage. There, he met Tobias McCarthy, a store owner and the leader of a group seeking to overthrow Chestone. Tobias agreed to sacrifice himself to help Edward retrieve the treasure of his century town in exchange for freeing Emily's group from chess clutches. However, he betrayed Edward at the last minute and killed him. Fortunately, Edward's soul was awakened and reincarnated as a lion by an ancient omelet he found earlier. After returning to the eagle statue to its rightful place, Edward's soul was returned to his original body. He then used this newfound power to defeat Jed and his henchmen, successfully rescuing Emily, who was imprisoned within the town. Together, they escaped from this haunted place on an abandoned train. Thirteen years after that event, Edward was last seen in Delhi before he mysteriously disappeared. Seventy years later, in 2008, Edward woke up with amnesia and was held captive by two strangers who performed rituals to weaken him. One of them intended to kill Edward, but a mysterious shadow appeared, eliminating the gods and giving him a chance to escape. During this ordeal, Edward overheard a conversation between his captor and an old man named Theo Paddington. The captor threatened to torture Theo until the old man used the life-saving stone to show them the path of light. However, an incident occurred. Cracks appeared and a dark entity took the life of the threatener, separating Theo and Edward. Wandering through the building for a while, Edward discovered that he was in the building adjacent to the Central Park of New York City and learned that he was also a mysterious entity similar to the monsters that were occupying it. However, Edward chose to side with the group of survivors rather than those entities. He later found Theo at the building's garage and they both decided to team up to evade Crowley the leader of the kidnapping gang who obtained the stone leading to the light. Following Theo's guidance, Edward and another surviving girl named Sarah escaped from the building, drove into the city, and witnesses it being destroyed by the cracks, the very thing unleashed by the stone they were seeking. The three then engaged in a feast race to avoid the cracks and the pursuit of enemy forces. However, 
Due to perilous situation, Theo decided to give his stone to Edward, instructing him and Sarah to meet him at room 943 in the museum before he ended his life to avoid being controlled by the monsters. Carrying Theo's phone found his body, Edward received a call from Crowley, who demanded Edward to give him the stone in exchange for helping him restore his memory and revealing his identity. Edward bluntly refused. Edward then learned that he had been missing since 1938 from a medical staff member and continued his journey to the museum with Sarah. In front of the museum entrance, Sarah expressed her belief that dark forces were invading the place under the command of the demon Lord Lucifer, who was attempting to return to the moral realm. At this moment, many mysterious creatures appear and pull Sarah up to the museum before letting her fall. Edward quickly rushed into the museum and saw Sarah, who was now encased in the cocoon made from Lucifer accents. After successfully rescuing Sarah, Edward received a kiss from her as a token of gratitude. To allow Sarah to rest, he proceeded to the room 943, where they met Theo's spirit and Edward learned about the history of the stone. It dates back to when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, possessing the ability to turn a human into a vessel containing the soul of a demon. While Edward followed Theo's instructions to the central part, Sarah remained at the museum to study the remaining notes and sent them to Edward to gather information. At 7 and 10 p.m., upon reaching Central Park, Edward encountered Crown Lee and was forced to hand over the stone. Fortunately, he managed to escape and set foot into the mysterious temple underground. However, he needed to find the other half of the key to open the path to the line, which was in the possession of an ancient alchemist named Hermes. Edward then cooperated and brought Hermes back to the museum, but witnesses Crowley holding Sarah hostage. Nevertheless, Edward successfully shot Crowley, freeing his teammate. The three then found the gate capable of allowing Lucifer to enter the real world. Hermes and Edward insert the stone to open the gate with the intention for Lucifer to possess Edward's body and defeat him. However, Sarah appeared to take Edward's place to prevent his sacrifice. As Lucifer successfully sees Sarah's body, Edward was forced to make a difficult decision. If Edward shot Sarah, Lucifer would enter his body and use it to dominate the world. However, if he let Sarah survive, he would admit that he loved Sarah more than regaining his memories. Lucifer then successfully seized Sarah's body and mocked Edward as a lonely person. But Edward simply said, I'm used to it before leaving. Leaving a big question mark for the fate of Hermes, Sarah, and Edward in the future. Seven years later, in 2015, in the town of Low Witch, Virginia, Lucifer's darkness still loomed over everywhere. A group of people with the same goal of defeating the dark forces had been gathered, including Theodore Carnby, the descendant of Edward, Sarah Hartwood, Emily's granddaughter, engineer Gabriella Saunders, and Father Henry Jigger, marking the end of the timeline for the Along in the Dark series up to the present. In this remake, the story will go back to 1930, set at the Decito Mansion, where the first game took place, but the detailed story will be revealed in another video next week. Now, before we end the video, I hope you can give me a thumbs up, share if you find the video interesting, click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss all the videos airing weekly. For now, I'm MG Horror Studio. Thank you for being here.